Hiya, and welcome to Dupla Art, where I take the duplicates we find in our Giggles and Gallimaufry's unboxing and art with them. Today's duplicate is a Smushy Mushy Bestie Penelope Pineapple. I actually had more than one squishy duplicate, but I ended up choosing the pineapple. I had never worked with a squishy before, didn't know what materials would adhere to it. Why not just increase the level of intensity and work with a material I'd never done before either, air dry clay. The texture of this clay was definitely not something I was used to. And the important thing with air dry clay is once you've taken out the amount you're going to use, you really seal the container. I use cling wrap, wrap it really good and tight, and then put it in a Ziploc bag. And since I was going to be coloring this clay myself, I needed a pair of gloves. Two by two, hands of blue. You are such a boo. I ended up with an idea for a beach scene. Go figure. I used the Crayola air dry clay, which I had on hand. I thought it would be a good clay to start practicing with. I also did a test run to see how my chalk pastels would work to shade the clay, and it didn't end up working out well. So I ended up scrapping that idea. And then I got around to cutting the pineapple in half. That was strangely satisfying. I always wondered what was inside those things. I snaked out a roll of the beige clay to make the trunk of the palm tree. And I noticed that as I was cutting this, rather than cutting clean, it would pull. My X-Acto knife would just drag through it. So I ended up just using my scissors on it, which worked really well. I tried using my toothbrush on the clay to create a texture like I do with Palmer clay and it took a little bit. It didn't take the detail really well and I wasn't completely satisfied with it so I ended up just scrapping that and you'll see that later. I was wetting my finger off camera so you can't see but I was using water to get these pieces to stick together. I then used a little metal poker thing to score out the, what do you call it, texture of the trunk of the palm tree. Next I mixed in green acrylic till I got a color I was happy with, or I thought I was happy with. It ended up drying way too bright, but you'll see that later. I snaked out little pieces to add grass around the trunk of the, of the palm tree. The hardy clay was drying out very quickly so I was wetting my finger a lot and the edges of the piece were cracking and kind of like crumbling texture, but they weren't falling apart. So I kind of went with that to add more character to it. And with more of the beige clay, I cut out a star for a starfish. I added a little bit more to the uh, beach down below for the pineapple to sit in, in the scene. And then I shaped out a seashell. I had thought to add real shells, but with the cartoony look I was already getting out of this, I didn't think it was appropriate. Okay, appropriate is not the right word. I didn't think it looked right. And then of course you gotta add coconuts. The coconut nut is a big big nut, but this delicious nut is not a nut. 
It's the cocoa fruit. It's the cocoa fruit of the cocoa tree. Of the cocoa tree from the cocoa palm family. Once I was happy with that, I let it all dry. One eternity later. After it dried, the Crayola did not hold on to the hardy clay. Those pieces that were joined together just simply fell apart. But I am not one that throws away any piece that I've made because you never know what else you could put it in. And it just so happened that that's what happened with this piece. I decided to turn this little scene into a light switch cover. So I took a regular light switch. I wish I hadn't chosen brown, but I did. I sanded it down so that I'd have something to adhere to. I just used white acrylic paint and a makeup sponge to prime it. I used the same white acrylic paint to paint the seashell on this beach scene. It took about three coats of the white paint on the seashell to really get a good color. I mixed hot pink, high flesh tone, and white to get the color for the starfish. I used burnt sienna acrylic paint watered down quite heavily to go in and highlight the texture on the palm tree trunk and along the beach. Just let it drip into the cracks and then I used a clean makeup sponge to lift that color back off so that it just kind of sat in the grooves. It's the cocoa fruit. It's the cocoa fruit. Of the cocoa tree. Of the cocoa tree. From the cocoa palm family. And I used a toothpick and black acrylic paint to fill in the starfish's eyes and mouth. And then I wasn't happy with the color that the green had dried to. I mixed up a green that was more acceptable to me and applied that to the leaves and also to the top of the pineapple. That way the colors would match. And I tried watering the color down at first and pulling the color back up like I was doing with the, with the trunk. But again, because this was a different clay, the paint didn't react the same way. So it's all about learning your materials. And to address the fact that I didn't get much texture on the beach, I ended up watering down clear glue and using beach sand, which worked out really well. For the light switch plate itself, I just needed to make a sky. I used cobalt blue and calypso blue along with white. I started with a darker cobalt until I got a color that I liked. I used a makeup sponge for each color and then I tried to create a gradient in between them. And then I used another makeup sponge to pull the paint back off because I really just wanted a stippling kind of impressionist background. I didn't worry about too much paint towards the bottom because that's going to be covered up by the beach. Once it was all dry, it was time to glue it all together. I used an awl to poke a hole where the screw on the bottom of the plate was going to go. And I used a toothpick as I was gluing it on to make sure that I had that hole aligned. I also mixed more clear glue with the beach sand to fill in the cracks around the edges, which would help hold it as well. And then I took all the broken lean pieces and tried to figure out how to put them back together. I ended up needing more trunk. The tree was gonna be taller. I had to leave room for the screw. So I just did the same thing and added that on. I did use clear glue underneath it because it was going to be drying and shrinking because I wasn't gonna wait much longer. I wanted this thing put together. I had such a great idea. Anyway, <laughs> but it was actually a good thing because as this trunk piece was drying and shrinking, it was gonna hold on to the leaves that I stuck into it. 
it did actually help. Once I was happy with where I was going to be placing the things, I just started gluing everything down, making sure I left plenty of room to get the screw in that hole to put it on the wall. And unfortunately, I had a problem with my camera when I was filming this next little part of putting the pineapple on the light switch. And yes, those are Google eyes. I couldn't help it. We had them. I used them. I like it. And then I just used black acrylic paint to give them a little kawaii smile. And I used the same clear glue to stick the pineapple in place. And I put rubber bands around him until he was... Wow. She, sorry, Penelope, was glued down. And I did shade it the same way that I did the lower trunk with the watered down burnt sienna paint. And then because I can't leave well enough alone, I got the brilliant idea that I wanted to add water to the bottom of this, so I used silicone. You just use 100% silicone and mica powder to color it. Making sure you should use gloves. Uh, I didn't. I am not a crafting role model. <laughs> also make sure when you're working with silicone, you are in a well-ventilated space and you can put this piece to dry somewhere where you don't have to smell it because it smells. It smells a lot and not good. Before applying the silicone, you are gonna to wanna to protect the surface that you are going to be doing this on. I used cling wrap, which is going to come right off the silicone after it's dry, and a canvas, wrap that around there to work on. I didn't completely mix the blue mica through because I wanted to see streakiness of the different coloration in this. You do have to work quickly with the silicone. It does dry very fast. And you just apply the silicone like you are frosting a cake. I pushed the silicone up into the piece and pulled back at an angle to get kind of a swooping wave effect. I'm not really worried about that runoff because once this is dry, you can just clip that edge nice and clean. And then I let the blue dry for about two hours. And then I used white iridescent mica powder in the silicone to create the wave caps. And you really can't see it in the camera, but it really does sparkle nicely. Again, frosting just like a cake and pushing it up into and over and back to create that wave. And then I let the entire piece dry for a good two days. That way the smell was out of it and everything before I went and put this on the wall. Just took the cling wrap off the canvas, peeled it off the back of the piece. I just took my scissors and cleaned up the stray edges, the spider webbing. I actually was half tempted to leave that. It was kind of neat. Uh, but no, in the end I did clean that up. And it's ready for installation with one little trick. I didn't completely glue down the scrunchie. I left it so I could squish the corner up and hide the screw underneath it. I really learned a lot in making this piece. Initially, it was just to learn how to use the air dry clay. I learned some tricks, but I've learned that this is a material I've got to do a lot more work with before I feel completely comfortable. It does work completely different than polymer, which is what I'm comfortable with, but that's okay. So next is just to install it, just take down the old light switch, put in the new, and now my favorite wall item has a buddy. The only problem I have with this piece is now every time I turn on the light, I giggle, because I can't help but boop the pineapple. This is a prime example of mixed media. I just used anything and everything, kitchen sink art. <laughs> but like I said, I really like how it turned out. This was a really fun piece to put together. I had no idea when I started that this is where it was gonna end. 
You can also subscribe to our unboxing channel. The link is down below. So go see us at Blind Bag Hags. Thank you so much for watching. And please like this video and subscribe to see what else I make with our Giggles and Gallimaufres duplicates. Have a great day. Bye-bye.